I've discovered a reliable way to test AFDDs, which we discovered while upgrading this old MK Sentry consumer unit. Stay tuned to see how. Persuading a customer to replace their consumer unit can be a challenging conversation. To the untrained eye, the old and new units may seem alike. However, in the 12 years since its installation, circuit protection within the wiring regulations has evolved significantly. We are replacing the old board with the one from the new dual stack range from Luden. And we've brought in Ross from RS Electrics to put the board through its paces. So while Ross gets busy taking out the old board, let's have a look at the five reasons why we've decided to upgrade. As we install the new board, some methods will challenge how electricians have been installing consumer units and fuse boxes for decades. So let us know your opinion in the comments. Let's start with the obvious. The old board was a 17th edition design made of plastic and metal became an essential requirement for new installations under the 18th edition of BS7671. While in its own right that isn't enough to force a change, let's look at the risk. This old board is installed under the main escape route from the upstairs of the property. The staircase is constructed from exposed wood and doesn't offer any form of fire barrier. If a fire starts from an electrical fault in the consumer unit, that could be a major problem. Surge protection. The property is in a rural location and is located close to the distribution transformer. So there's a high risk of a surge event from nearby lightning strikes making their way into the property and damaging electronic equipment. The customer has previously reported that some appliances mysteriously stopped working after thunderstorms. Adding a surge protection device can reduce the risk of damage. Leakage current. We've observed a significant amount of leakage current in our measurements, which is not attributed to a specific source, but rather accumulates from various electronic appliances. This high leakage current has the potential to cause nuisance tripping. The previous board was a combination of split load RCD and RCBOs installed on circuits that were more prone to tripping, such as outdoor sockets. By installing individual RCBOs, we can mitigate the risk of nuisance tripping and minimize the impact on the circuits in which a trip does occur. DC leakage current. We also measured a reasonable amount of DC leakage current, which is generated by electronic loads, such as washing machines with inverter driven motors and electric vehicle chargers. DC currents can cause problems with the operation of older type AC, RCDs and RCBOs, which means they don't trip when a fault occurs. This could explain why the high AC leakage current we noticed earlier didn't cause any nuisance tripping. Upgrading the RCDs to type A or B will eliminate this risk. Renewables. In the coming months, the property will undergo the installation of solar PV and battery storage. And the circuit supplying a remote building where that's going to be fitted has several issues. Currently, it's connected to a type AC RCBO, which fails to address that DC leakage problem we mentioned earlier. However, also we have RCBOs protecting that circuit, which can only detect earth leakage faults when the power flows in one direction from the supply to the load. This poses a challenge with solar and battery storage systems where the power can flow in the reverse direction, potentially rendering the device ineffective. To resolve this, we plan to switch the remote building to a circuit protected solely by an MCB. And fortunately, the cable installation method allows us to make this change seamlessly. We believe these are compelling reasons to justify upgrading the consumer unit. If you're interested in delving deeper into those issues, you'll find some useful links in the video description. Additionally, we've developed a comprehensive training CPD on best practices in consumer unit upgrades. We've also created a brand new CPD that explores the topics we're about to discuss. But first, let's check on Ross and see how that board change is progressing. Luden has worked hard to create a range of consumer units to please everyone with both round and square knockouts. Always looking for the Instagram friendly image, Ross ignores convenience and creates his own knockouts so the cables enter behind the bus bar. As well as adding the dual stack consumer unit to the Pro range, Luden have been innovating in a few other ways, including a consumer unit you can buy with a black finish, ideal for those city apartments where black is very much the on-trend colour for everything from wiring accessories to baths and shower taps. Uh, also, another great little feature, you can now get this little magnet clips in place, allowing you to hinge the lid up and hold it in place while you're getting your labelling Instagram friendly. Now, I know Luden do supply a range of labels that come with it, but we like that continuous look, and we've been trying out this Epsom 
printer for that, which is probably the easiest printer I've ever used that comes with an app to do this nice seamless labeling and it doesn't waste material. So check that out if you get a chance. Another innovation from Luden, although we're not using them today, a lot of people, when you're fitting renewables, add an additional consumer unit. We've got these connector blocks, or sometimes known as Henley blocks, that are pretty good. Obviously, in a range of nice colours to match your phase and neutral and the uh, CPC connection. And the good thing about them is they're pretty robust and they tessellate, there's a word from school, nicely together on the back so you can keep them in a nice interlocking row. Now let's delve into a hot topic. Since the invention of the first fuse box, the arrangement of circuits within fuse boxes or consumer units has traditionally followed the current rating sequence. Typically, the devices with the highest current rating are placed adjacent to the main switch or the RCD, and then devices gradually decreasing in current rating. Therefore, the order typically follows with a cooker, sockets, water heater, lights, and if you're generous, some spare ways at the end. This layout is commonly found in pre-built consumer units and is often even specified within building drawings. However, does this generally represent the best engineering solution? The tripping characteristic of devices is affected by ambient temperature and the current flowing through those devices generates a small power loss, which results in heat raising the ambient temperature within the consumer unit enclosure. This is typically not an issue in a conventional electrical setup since only a few circuits consistently operate at full capacity. You might use high current appliances for a few hours, an electric shower even for a few minutes, and the devices are likely used at different times throughout the day. However, as we progress towards electrifying everything, such as cars and heating, and incorporating solar PV generation into the equation, we may encounter a scenario where multiple higher current circuits consistently operate at total capacity for extended durations. To demonstrate, I've taken a thermal image of the MCB in the previous consumer unit, which is linked to the EV charger in this installation. Following several hours of charging, you can see a significant temperature rise. Now consider the scenario where the circuit breaker is placed near other heavily loaded circuits. In the modern home, with increasing electrification, these circuits could include devices like water heaters, heat pumps, and solar inverters, which may operate for extended durations. This could create a localized hotspot within the consumer unit and affect the tripping characteristics of these devices. Now, we have delved into this matter extensively in our latest CPD training course. If you're involved in the installation of EV chargers and renewables, I highly recommend taking a look. This issue is not unknown, and manufacturers provide derating data for circuit protection devices, which may require the use of larger cables as a result. However, when upgrading this consumer unit, we can't change the cables what can we do? Instead of following the layout from highest to lowest, we've carefully examined the existing circuits and strategically positioned those that are likely to experience a high continuous load next to lightly loaded circuits or padded them out with spare ways. As a result, we've left an empty way next to the main switch, a spare way next to the EV charger, and spaced out the circuit that feeds the sub-main, which will incorporate renewables. It's a challenge in a board upgrade as you always have to trade off the available cables that are left with when you've removed the old consumer unit. We've also added an isolator to the sub-main feeding the renewables as it's an alternate source of supply. Now let's examine the AFDDs. We took the advantage of the upgrade opportunity to install AFDDs in the circuit supplying socket outlets for two reasons. Firstly, it's a recommendation stated in BS 7671 Amendment 2, and who could ignore that? Secondly, being a rural property, vermin can pose a problem, as evidenced by the discovery of mouse droppings in the loft space. Now, one could argue that based on this, AFDDs should be installed in all of the circuits. However, considering the number of circuits we have here, the cost would be quite substantial. Consequently, the customer has decided to invest in a mousetrap for the time being. Since the introduction of AFDDs, we found that rather than just protecting the fixed wiring, they are good at identifying potential faults with connected appliances. Which brings me to our AFDD tester. This Kenwood Chef food mixer manufactured in the 1970s continues to serve its purpose even after nearly 50 years. With no fancy electronic motor controls, it relies solely on solid engineering. Interestingly, however, every time it's plugged in, it reliably trips the AFDD on this circuit. 
Is it due to the peculiar current waveform generated by motor control of that era? Or is it a result of the temporary but permanent fix to the appliance lead? Before giving up on this sturdy piece of British engineering, we decided to conduct some further investigations. And surprisingly, the AFDD does not trip when it's plugged into other outlets on this circuit. It only trips when it's used with the pop-up countertop socket. Therefore, it becomes evident that the issue does not lie with our food mixer. It is not a miracle of modern engineering and will test AFDDs. It's down to that pop-up socket. Perhaps some further investigation required. We're going to return to this job in the coming months for the solar and battery installation. Hopefully, we'll have an answer on that socket and what is tripping that AFDD. Please share your thoughts on Ross's consumer unit upgrade installation. Is it as Instagram friendly as you'd like to see? And of course, the aspects of the new dual row consumer unit from Luden. To begin the CPD module associated with this video, simply watch the on-screen video now. Till then, we can tuck into this delicious fruitcake. <laughs>